Hey everyone, welcome back to Gabriel Knight. It's been quite a while. Um, I won't take too long uh, talking a lot. Um, I just want to say a few things. One is that I fixed the configuration so that, you know, narrator speech, hold on, when I look at something, I can actually see it. The, Na the Napoleon House is one of the French co Quarter's very old, uh, very classic neighborhood bars and restaurants. Gabriel often finds himself, uh, Gabriel is found here frequently. So. Yeah, you should have been able to see that, so I fixed that. I also think I fixed the audio, you know, so the tape didn't sound like it was scratching or anything. I think I fixed everything, which is good. It took me a lot It took me a lot of time to fix that. Um, also, items. You know, since I'm not expecting you guys to remember everything I've done. Let's see. Items. So, let's see. I got this uh, from the police office, and let's see. I opened it. No. Or what it was was, you know, let's see, I had a failed recording, which was why I stopped playing and just played Monkey Island, but um, I figured out that I could open this envelope. Uh, Gabriel opens a vanilla, vanilla envelope and gets two photographs. I don't remember what they were, though. This was a dead person. Okay, one of the uh, one of the photos from Mosley is an official uh, voodoo, mur voodoo murders crime scene shot, a graphic close-up of a victim. And the other was, this should be Mosley, right? No, I want to look at it. Uh, a photograph of Mosley was apparently taken from his graduation from the police academy. He had hair back then. So there's that. Uh, these are tweezers. He got it from the shop, but he's had it forever. This is from his grandfather. It's the magnifying glass. This is the $20 gift certificate. This is the black shirt I got from the, the, the cathedral. And this is um, flashlight. I got it from the studio. And that's my inventory. I went to pretty much everywhere else. Um, I went to the Voodoo place. I went to the Jackson Square and the Overlook. So that's where I am at this point. But like I said, let's see. This is my second take. Oh yeah, oh God before I forget, because I'd really like to get rid of this paper. Okay, remember that, um, that German poem? Uh, I translated it, and the, translate, the translation that I made has been sitting on my desk for about a month now. Okay, it translates into three dragons. Three dragons crawl in my sleep. They want to eat my uh, living, s living soul. Fiery breath, split tongues, have eaten every meal. Or at least that's how I translated it. Okay. I think we're about ready to start the game again. And... Let's see. What was the other thing? Oh yeah. People in the cafe. I don't, I'm not going to bother talking to these people. These are just people who are lovebirds. And these are people who play chess. Uh, I don't remember you though. So let me talk to you. What's up? What's up? I don't know why. Okay, there we go. Buddy... I think the place you're looking for is down on Bourbon. Okay. Now this guy did have information, so let's talk to him. Hi, how's it going? It's been worse. Hmm. I don't know why there's a delay in that. But it's probably because there's a lot of sprites. Let's see if this fixes it. Could I ask you a few questions? Sure. I'm not too busy at the moment. Now hopefully this should work because of the... What can you tell me about voodoo? Voodoo? Yeah, that works. <laughs> I don't believe in it myself. I invented a drink once called Lavo's Tomb. But it wasn't very popular. Some people do believe, though. Even some of our regulars here at Napoleon House. Okay, so he doesn't know... Except he probably knows people about it. Uh, let me try another one. What can one. you tell me about voodoo? I'm no expert. You might want to talk to someone who believes in it. Okay, he doesn't know anything. What about the murders? What do you know about the voodoo murders? It's all over the papers. Some kind of serial killings. Okay. Um, what about what New can you Orleans? Tell me about New Orleans? Greatest city in the world. I'd never want to live anywhere else. OK. 
Okay, tell me about yourself. Tell me about yourself. A good bartender listens to other people's life stories without telling his own. Uh, what about the patrons? What can you tell me about your regulars in here? This crowd? The ones you see are mostly regulars. That guy and girl in the corner come here a lot. When they're not fighting, they're all over each other. In other words, they're in love. Yeah, what about the musicians? Tell me about the street musicians around here. I like music as much as the next guy, but they get pretty monotonous sometimes, you know? Like that drummer right outside. They say there's been a drummer outside Napoleon House since the day it opened. I like drums, but this character really gets on my nerves. It sounds like the same thing over and over. I just want to say, enough already. Sounds like my life. Yeah. Uh, well, I was pretty sure that one of these, uh, one of these got me a point. Let me go through again. What can you tell me about New Orleans? This city must get a million tourists a year, especially around Mardi Gras. Uh, what about himself? Tell me about yourself. A good bartender less uh, That again. What can you tell me about your regulars in here? See those old guys at the chess table? That's Sam and Marcus. They played every day for 20 years. Sam, the one with the purple jacket, he's lost every one of those games. It's not that he's a bad player. I've seen him beat guys twice as good as Marcus. But Marcus has Sam so psyched out, he loses his nerve every time. By the way, Sam, the chess player, he's into that voodoo stuff. He's always talking about spells and gree gree and stuff. Right, right, that's really? what it was. Thanks. That one of the chess players. Yeah. So what about So this? what has Sam told you about voodoo? Well, about 50 years ago, Sam was too shy to talk to this pretty girl he was in love with. He went to a voodooine and had her make him a love charm. It was a little pouch that he had to bury under the girl's front porch. Well, he buried the pouch, and the next day, he went up and talked to the girl. And, sure enough, she didn't reject him. Now she's his wife. <laughs> Poor guy. Okay, so Sam used voodoo to attract her. I think that's what happened. Uh, which one was Sam? He said it was one of the chess players, yeah? Uh, talk to you? Nothing like a good game of chess, no. huh? Yeah. I don't. Oh. They just don't say anything so. interesting. Shh, fine. Uh, can I interrogate? Sorry to... I'm not okay. the chatty type, am I, Sam? No, you bastard, you're not. Besides, I'm busy sucking for all Sam Drive. Whoa. I didn't need that. Ah, uh, you're a real sweetheart, Marcus, you bastard. Jeez. Too much information. Alright, so I guess I can't do that right now. Okay, so the next thing I did was... I think I went to the drugstore. Right? Yeah. Because there was this place. And the guy here told me something about, like, some sort of Hi. cult. Uh -huh. Some sort of cult or something. And I don't think I was able to pick up anything here. Maybe I can if I look around. Hi there. Is this your store? This is a Dixieland drug store, and I own it, me. Name's Walker. Willie Walker. Willie Walker? What? No. <laughs> uh, question you. Because I know you say something important. Mind if I ask you a few questions? Ask what you want, I'll answer what I want. Like some French name, but I don't remember. Can you tell me what you know about voodoo? This is a novelty shop, monsieur. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Cabri saint -Cour. Yeah, that's what, what it was. What did you say? Nothing, nothing. Those killings have nothing to do with my shop, monsieur. Yeah, I don't know what that translates into in, in French, since I don't know French. What can you tell me about New Orleans? I've lived here all my life, me. Okay, tell me about these... What did you mean when you said Cabri saint -Cour. I didn't say that. Oh, you yes did. you did. I heard you say it. You heard wrong, monsieur. I said no such thing. I mean, I guess it's some sort of, uh, like, you know, it was supposed to be some sort of code word. 
but he didn't realize that he wasn't part of that cult or whatever Cabri Sancure is. Tell me about yourself. My name's Willy Wonka. I own the plates. Okay, Willy Wonka. I'm done with you, I think. Or maybe. Ca just, I just want to see if there's anything new. What did you mean when you said Cabri Sancure? I didn't say that. No, he already did that. Okay, um... What can you... I'm a busy man, monsieur. I don't... Okay, what do murders? You monsieur! Alright. Uh... He'll probably be important later. And I think I did a lot of looking around here, but didn't find anything useful. Oh, I guess I did. Uh, the sign says, Special St. John's Eve Lepenya. Lanyap. My French is lousy. But everyone in New Orleans knows what that means. A little something extra. What kind of free bottle of lover to come back to me? Oil or Mr. Gamblin' Oil with every purchase? Okay, so it's Lanyap. Viagra. Alright, I get you. It's Viagra. Or at least that's the impression I'm getting. Alright, I got points for that. Small bags are made out of felt and leather. Those are gree gree. They're full of magic. No guarantees though, you know. Fair enough. These are voodoo, uh, voodoo dolls, it looks. A variety of cloth dolls are arranged above the shelf, each impaled with a single silver pin. This is a crocodile. It's a mannequin wearing a crocodile mask. Okay, this is... Glass jars contain things that I and can't identify. Oh, what was, what'd you say? And wouldn't want to. Yeah. Uh, potion ingredients. These jars must be do for do-it-yourselfers. Um, just has a bunch of merchandise. Merchandise, merchandise, merchandise. Uh, tire shelf is stocked with containers of High John the Conqueror root powder. Can I take some root powder? I don't know what that stuff does, but I don't like the sound of it. Okay, I think that's all I was able to do from before, so let's get out of here. And then I went to Grandma's house. And then I talked to Grandma, and that was pretty much the failed recording, so. Gabriel, I'm so glad you stopped by. After I finished talking to Grandma, um, I'll be back to. Sorry, being, it's been a while, Grandma. I'll be back to being blind. Not at all. Give us a kiss. Now come and sit down. Tell me how you're doing. <sighs> okay, she is a sweet grandma. Um, gonna look around a little bit. Mostly pictures of Gabriel, his dad, and Harrison Knight. Granny likes soft lighting. Granny Knight rarely, uh, rarely uses the fireplace. Too much of a hassle to clean. The sofa has a worn blue chits pattern that Gabriel remembers what vaguely? Yeah, fondly. That clock has been in the Wright family for centuries. That's my gran. Adorable as always. You're such a tease. Uh, Gabriel lived at, uh, grew up in this room. Makes him feel uh, claustrophobic. Carnations are granny's favorite. I wonder if I have to know that. Pictures. Okay, I think I'm ready to talk to her again. How you been, Gran? Just fine, dear. I'm sorry I bothered you at work, but I was hoping you'd get a chance to go through your father's things in the attic. Don't be silly. You can call me anytime. Yes, that was one of the things that you know Grace told me to do. But also to find Mosley, which I don't know where he is. Can we talk, Gran? Of course, my boy. How can I help? Okay, she gives a lot of family history. Um, what can you tell me about voodoo? Voodoo? What an odd question, Gabriel. Of course, you always were interested in monster movies and all that other weird stuff. You get that from your father and granddad. I don't know anything about it, dear. Of course, it was very big in New Orleans at one time, but you don't hear about it so much these days. Too much else in the world to worry about, I guess. Yeah, so grand, uh, dad and granddad were certainly interested in the voodoo 
murders. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Oh, Gabriel, nothing. And I don't want to. I sometimes wonder what this world is coming to. Uh, St. Orleans. What can you tell me about New Orleans? New Orleans is very southern. Of course, though, not as much as it used to be when I was a girl. It's gotten much more influenced by the East Coast and that California stuff. Still, it hasn't changed as much as other places, I reckon. We've always been happy here. Okay, St. John's Eve. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? St. John's Eve? Hmm. I remember when I was a girl, we always had a St. John's Eve Mass. The Mass was set at midnight, and we held candles. One time on the way home, we were waylaid by a large group of drunken revelers. They didn't hurt us, but I was frightened. My father was furious. We never went to St. John's Eve Mass after that. Okay. I wonder if that's important. Um... This. Do you have any idea what Cabri Saint Gaul means? Hmm. Something without something, I think. My French is so rusty. I swear my mind is going. It's okay, thanks. Hmm. I wonder if Ga uh, if Grace knows that, actually. But I'm not going to do that right now. Tell me about yourself. Me? Oh, surely you have something more interesting to talk about. Oh, come on, Gran. All right, dear. What do you want to hear? What do you do all day? What do you do all day? You know how I love to knit and work in my garden? I also take long walks. It's the only way to keep an old body like mine from stiffening up. You're not old. Oh, don't be foolish. I'm older than the hills. Yeah, he's quite a charmer. Um, I don't remember any of this being important. How'd you find Granddad? Tell me about before you met Granddaddy. Well, you know I was born Rebecca Wright. My daddy owned a lot of land outside of town. We grew peas, corn, cotton, all kinds of things. Oof. It was a good childhood, but my father was very strict. He didn't much let me out of his sight. Okay, I guess this tape still skips a little bit. I'll have to figure out how to fix that. Tell me. I Wait, I already did this. And a piece of one of those small oh, add-on dues for man went flying off. I swear, Harrison and I were the only ones that noticed. We both started laughing to beat the band. Everyone looked at us like we were a couple of loonies. It was then I knew that he was for me. Sorry, I thought it was the same thing, but it wasn't. But I remember that none of this stuff is significant. Or, you know, uh, about the granddad, you know, uh, they met and, you know, they had a very good life together. How you feeling these days? That's a fiddle, and don't you worry your head about it. Uh, anything. Just tell me anything at all. I had your father when I was 22. The doctors told me I couldn't have any more after him, so I'm afraid I spoiled him rotten. Just tell me anything at all. I never loved any man but your grandfather. And I never will. Do you love Gabriel? Just tell me anything at all. I hate to admit it, but I was a jealous little thing when your granddad and I were younger. I loved him so ferociously, and he did attract the eyes of the ladies, whether he wanted to or not. Yeah. Oh, nothing. Ne oh. I'm done. Um. Yeah, the Knight family it tells me a lot about the Knight family, so let me just compliment her first. You know, you get prettier every time I see you. Oh, you. <laughs> Pretty sure it doesn't go anywhere, though. Tell me about our family. Who would you like to hear about? Your granddad, your father, or your mother? Okay, from my, from what I remember, Harrison Knight. Which one was? Is Harrison Knight the grandfather or the grand or the regular father? Just a minute. Tell me something about Granddad. Your granddad immigrated to America when he was 21. He worked his way through school, met married me, and we had your father, Philip. Yeah, I remember he didn't have 
much interesting things about, about him, but this was... He, uh, Philip seems to be interested in voodoo. I think that was Tell me about my father. Your father was my only child. How we adored him. Philip suffered from terrible nightmares, just like your granddad did. They were two peas in a pod. Oh, that's something I don't remember. Okay, so Gabriel and the Gabriel fathers um, get nightmares, so... Okay. Tell me about my father. When Philip met your mother, it was love at first sight. They were married two weeks later. Never looked at a girl seriously until then. And he looked at plenty. You have your father's way with women, Gabriel. And your granddad's. <laughs> oh. Tell me about my father. I wanted to just lay down and die when he and your mother were killed in that car crash when you were only eight. It was the thought of taking care of you that kept me going, Gabriel. The police say your father swerved off the road after being frightened by something. Perhaps a deer in the road or a wild cat. Yeah, that was something. Um, the mother and father died in car crash, I think is what she just said. So this should be... Tell me yeah. about my mother. The mother. Your mother was Margaret Templeton when your father met her. She came from a very wealthy Creole family in New Orleans. She was beautiful and reckless. She was madly in love with your father, of course, but I also think she liked defying her family. Since you're so interested in family history these days, why don't you go by St. Louis Cemetery Number 1 and visit the family tomb? It would be a sweet gesture. Maybe I will. St. Louis... I'm just writing that down since it seems to be important. Cemetery... One. Okay. Tell me about my mother. Your mother's family refused to give her money after the marriage. All she had left was a modest trust fund from a great aunt, who happened to like Philip. The remainder of your mother's trust fund became yours when she died. That's what you used to open your bookshop. Yeah, so... I think that's about it. You know, the, the grandfather isn't doesn't have too much going on with him. Is there more with Philip? Tell me about my father. Your granddad wanted Philip to have a normal life. He was obsessed by that thought. He pushed Philip to go to law school. Philip was driven to art. He painted almost in a daze. He would get so inside himself when he worked. Okay. Well, let's see. So now that I've done that, I'm actually finally not, or I'm finally blind again. So I wanted to go upstairs and look at the dad's stuff, um, unless there's something here. All right, yeah, the clock. Um, can I do something with this clock? Doesn't feel like messing with the clock, including Gabriel. Let's get up here. I'm going to go up to the attic, Gran. Be careful of the dust. Okay, a new place. Um, look around. An old velvet curtains are hung in the parlor uh, since before Gran died. Or, what? Before Gran lightened the place up. Okay, that's different. Gabriel has seen these ornaments every year at Christmas for as long as he can, rem he can remember. Grandma's attic is a storeroom of forgotten treasures. Okay. It's a tire. An, an elaborate mechanical clock, probably of German origin. German origin is... Whoa. German origin is amongst the discarded treasures of the attic. Okay. I remember that one of the, uh, the phone calls, like, there was a German guy. And one of the stuff is German, so I'm going to look at this probably in a second. But, okay, the trunk is old. Uh, box of knickknacks. Ladies half in the From 20s. From Grand Virginia Wolf, period. Oof, Virginia Wolf. That must have been the year Granddaddy caught Santa on the roof. Not one of my favorite, my favorite authors, but to each their own. Ah. Uh, okay, let's try to pick up stuff. I want to take the. Dark I think board. I'll leave that up here. Can I take. There's nothing I want in there. I think I'll... I think I'll take Daddy's sketchbook with me. 
Oh, I didn't realize there was a sketchbook. Um, let me open this and look at the sketchbook. Or open the sketchbook. Ah. Uh, well, he was a doodler. <laughs> um, okay, this looks like Satan or something. Rings? Kind of looks like a, a shield. Three snakes. And I remember that snakes seems to be interchangeable with dragons in this game. Uh, I don't know what this is supposed to be. This is like a tiger? Three snakes again? <laughs> um, a lion? And I, I don't know. Well, that's interesting. That, does it let me look at certain things? Images haunt the pages of Philip Knight's sketchbook the way they must have haunted his mind. They touch deep chord. So familiar are they that they are blah blah blah. I, I, I don't think it was important. Okay. Uh, how about this? Can I op open this? I don't want to take the clock. Can I operate the clock? There we go. Um, okay. Can I use... pull the key out? The key should stay with the clock. Operate the key. Nothing happens. Ring of symbols don't appear to have any mechanical function, but it does move. So I can... Oh! Okay, I can swerve this around. Let me look at these symbols. A ring of six symbols that surrounds the face of the clock. A sword, a sun, an, ang a, what? an angel, a noose, an eclipse, and a dragon. Okay. Well, which one's which? Because <laughs> the only thing that seemed uh, seemed useful is the dragon, since dragons um, have been mentioned. Uh, hold on, hold on. Um. Okay, here's the sword. Sword, sun. Was it just an order? Sword, sun. Is that an angel? This is a noose. And this is an eclipse. So I guess this is the sun. So this should be the dragon, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I guess that's where I want to have it. Can I operate this key? Okay, dragons. Can I operate this? Hands don't appear to have any mechanical function other than... Oh, they can move. So what do I do this? Um... Huh. There's got to be more to this puzzle, because, you know, this would just be a six-part puzzle, so hold on. Sure I can't do with anything with this? Just operate the, the hands. Got to be able to do something. Oh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I saw this symbol come up, but... Okay. What do I want to do with this? Um, well, let me try 3 o'clock. Because that poem and everything has been talking about three dragons. So if this is dragons, let's see if I can move it to three. I think it's, what, this? Yeah, okay. Let's try this. Okay. Hopefully this works, because that, that's about the only thing I have. Can I operate this? Yes, I can. You old fox. Yeah, since uh, Three Dragons has been such a central theme. Okay. So that's a pretty interesting puzzle. I probably would have not had it that easily if it wasn't for the fact that I've had that translation sitting on my desk for a month. Um, or that I was able to translate it in the first place. Okay, let's uh, look at this stuff here I just picked up. Which is here. A photo, probably at least 50 years old, shows two me uh, young men standing with an I older... I wonder who they are. I wonder... With an older man outside of a I castle. Who okay, let's... Let's take this stuff. Oh, there's something else. What's this? It's a letter on fancy paper. 
pick up. Alright, I'm gonna look at this stuff. Look, look. The letter is addressed to Heinz Ritter, which I think is the guy who called me. So he must be uh, interested in some of the stuff, but it was also, yeah, the German chest. Uh, who are these people? There was something about the f that was said about the photograph. Um, okay. The old photograph shows Gabriel's f grandfather with two other men that Gabriel has not identified. Okay. Well, alright. Whew. Well, it's good to be back in Gabriel Knight. That was a fun pu little puzzle, but... I mean, when you have a translation sitting on your desk, I guess... The first thing you do is try to put it to three dragons, so... Alright, well... I'm going to exit this, and, um... Alright, the game... Finally back in Gabriel Knight, so... Phew, looking forward to it. I was told that I can't get stuck until day 10, so that means that I don't have to worry so much about, you know, I don't want to screw everything up all the time, but if, if it doesn't happen until day 10, then I can actually just adventure as I normally would, so I'm excited about that. I'm excited about you guys being, follow, uh, being able to follow along in the game, and glad to be playing the game again, so I'll see you in the next episode.